home. Hello there again. This is Chris from Sake of Science. I am driving to pick up my son and we are going to start a new adventure together that is very much science related. So I don't know if you pay any attention to television shows or anything and generally I don't watch television for the most part. Because there's another show on television, a friend of mine, I keep hearing these people who were saying uh, it will kill or it will cut. So I'm like, what's that all about? Uh, a good friend of mine actually was saying that. He's like, checked out Forge and Fire, it's very cool. Uh, these guys are forging knives and what have you, and you're into knives, you're into martial arts and stuff like that, so you probably dig it. So I checked it out, and holy crap, it's awesome. It is fantastic. It is the coolest looking thing, you know, hobby I've ever seen. You're using fire to melt metal, and you beat it with a hammer, and you turn it into a knife or any number of other weapons or other tools. So, it just so happens it's the rainy season down here in South Florida, so... I can't go fossiling unless I drive to northern Florida or some other areas. So what does a man do when he runs out of the ability to have fun with his hobby, his favorite hobby? Uh, one must find other things to do, and I can't make videos about fossiling, so the new series I am introducing is uh, the Sake of Science series on learning how to forge weapons, metal. but. First, I must acquire the materials to build my own forge and tools and what have you. So I've been doing a bunch of research over these last couple of weeks since I really decided this is what I was gonna do. And I have a very good idea of what I need to do. I'm gonna build my own forge. And once the forge is up and running with the small amount of tools that I currently have, I'm gonna build my own tongs using the forge. Uh, I'm gonna build another hammer, a couple of different size hammers. Uh, depending on the steel that I can find, but I have some ends on steel, so that should be okay. Plus, I've been doing research like crazy on the different uh, metals, how they're treated, how you heat treat them, because heat treating seems to be a big issue with warps and, and cracked blades and all that kind of business. So, that's the, this is going to be the sake of science, uh, sake of science series, which is actually kind of hard to say. Uh, all about. Um, we're gonna learn about the science of metals. We're gonna learn about the science of why the steels are labeled the way they're labeled, what it means, what it means to the weapon, what it means to the steel. And it's gonna be an informative series all about the science of forging. And of course, watch me bumblefuck my way through uh, forging tools and then eventually weapons. So, I'm picking up the boy and we will be going out and picking up some material. I already got my anvil, which was awesome. I just happened to find it on uh, Craigslist. Got it. So. Onward, picking up Lucius. Peace. Hello again, hello again, hello again. Today was a successful day. We managed to buy everything we need for our forge minus fire bricks because there are no fire bricks here in Stewart, apparently. So, we're in this little town I live in. So I wanna show you guys the, uh, the things I bought. Now this is gonna be, I wouldn't call it a ghetto forge, but it's gonna be a, be rough but all you need to do is apply heat to a specific area and then contain it and that's exactly what we're gonna to manage to do so let me show you some of the stuff I bought today for cheap too all right we got metal rods I'm gonna use this to make my first set of, of uh, tongs I got some angle iron to for when I get when the bricks come in we're gonna use these angle this angle iron to help hold our bricks together and these uh, sheets of metal to um, wire up or do up the frame so the forge will be fully contained and, and looking good. All right, so that's that. Sheet metal is for when I mount the, the, the torch. This is the torch. All right, it will make enough air or enough, it puts out 500,000 BTUs, which is more than enough to contain within a forge and make fire. The only thing I may do is cut this off and make that a little bit smaller. Got a nice long long hose that goes directly into a propane tank I can use a 20 pound tank so that's perfect got Lucius I ha no, that's me hammer picked up a couple hammers cheap hammers you know you get me started I'll make my own hammer after a while this is gonna be Luke's hammer he's a little dude with a little hammer and uh, wire brush I went to a pawn shop picked up stuff I got myself a Dremel tool some other files I got another file that I'm gonna use for my first blade that I told 
I would use, told my wife I would use for her, for her uh, first blade, if I can find it in here. Oh, here it is. That's hardenable steel right there. So this is going to be my first blade. I'm going to use this to build a blade and give it to my wife. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's going to be a blast. It's going to be a good time. The two hammers I showed you. Yep, both hammers. What else I get? Ooh, some clamps, ear stuff, chopped blades for my saw. I got some welding gloves to keep the heat off me. It's going to be awesome. And that's the anvil I already got. So that's the anvil. I am picked up this anvil for steel. Comes, it's old. It's like 1877. Yeah, 1877. October 23rd is when that was made. This will be a perfect size for the stuff I'm going to be doing. I'll be very happy. So I got some stuff, man. Ooh, I picked this up also at the pawn shop for cheap too. So this will help me make my first first uh, hammer eventually. So rock and roll. What's up there, Chris Camel from Sake of Science. Today we're going to be building the forge. We actually got all the materials and everything's put together. Long list of stuff to make the actual workshop work together and Lucius has even got his own little baby hammer. Um, it's been a couple weeks getting everything put together. I got all my fire blocks. I'm ready to build the forge. Um, so today is basically make a workshop and that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to start. We have a main tool table or tool bench for workbench and we have the sander on one side for sanding the blades. Um, on this side we're going to mount the, uh, the vise vise over here, sander here, and we're going to have a separate workbench that we're going to be building later on. Alright, so cinder blocks are going to go on this rolling table, and on the rolling table on the top of that is what the forge is going to go on, but before that we're actually going to build the forge on the, uh, the tool bench, and, and then move it to the roller thing, so that should work out in the end. Um, then we've got a, uh, an ammo thing for all our safety equipment, for safety glasses, earplugs, and um, uh, masks, particulate masks, which is very important when you're grinding metal. And uh, hopefully the drawer there will pick up most of the, uh, the small tools and, and we'll work on everything else. Nice hand there. That was the wife. So, very simple printed things. Only problem I have now is where to put the anvil. I just so happened to see a guy down the road who's selling uh, what looks like telephone poles, but short sections of it. So I just got to get the right height that I'm going to need and hopefully be able to pick that up and uh, then mount the um, the anvil to that. So everything should work out. Mind the dog running into the tripod because the dog's an asshole. Anyway, so today we're going to film all that. We're going to be building, uh, mounting the sander, mounting the vise, building the forge itself, mounting that vo forge on top of the rolling tool cabinet that uh, we're going to build and the last thing we're going to do is actually build the um, the uh, the torch for the forge. I got a torch but I'm going to change it a little bit so it's a little bit shorter because right now it's way too long so hopefully everything will work out soon. All right so see ya. Take the trusty old one wheel on out for a spin, literally a spin, and uh, show you guys something I found earlier, um, earlier today which should be a perfect material for mounting, uh, for mounting the um, the anvil that I picked up a while back. So I've been told that anvils should be uh, placed on pieces of wood to help decrease the sound. So that's what I'm gonna do. So it's like a stump. But I found a guy who's selling like telephone pole kind of stuff. So that's what I'm gonna go check out. It's just down the road in my neighborhood. So a little bit of one wheel run. very good but I'll show you what I found anyway All right. this says for sale so 23 inches is all I need so let's go say hi huh all right so I checked it out and the length is perfect for exactly 23 inches which is what I need however the width of the pole is only 11 inches and I need 13 so it's not wide enough so that is a shame, but that's the way it goes. We'll figure this stuff out. 
worth a shot. We're gonna call this the end of video one because it's mostly talking and nine minutes of me trying to figure things out. And this next video will actually be of the build and break up the monotony and uh, lots of time lapses and, and, and work like that. So it's, 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 it'll be a, a decent fun video. The fun video of course happens when we start forging and building stuff. So thanks for tuning in. Remember, explore the world around you. Why? For the sake of science.